We're through with it, so we have the written ones. All right. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you guys for coming. Um, Pastor Mildred, yesterday you said, don't rush. So that this from yesterday. You said, do not rush. Um, you have to give it time. And I was kind of waiting for you to say how long this time is going to be. So if you don't mind just answering that question of how long should you wait before you know that you should go ahead with courtship into marriage. Okay, actually, Pastor K said don't rush, so Pastor K. Okay. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. Um, I understand that sometimes situations are not all the same, but the general order that it should take is boy meets girl. Uh, you guys should first be friends. Talk. Know yourselves. But I notice that generation, they rush from I meet you to I date you. You know, they just jump into a relationship. And this brings a lot of confusion because you are now dealing with the person from inside instead of from outside. If you are from outside, there are things, and you are just friends, there are people you should know from that stage that this should not cross friendship. But fortunately, we all rush in and we're in a relationship now, we're dealing with it as my relationship. So that's why the average young person has a lot of exes. Loads of exes. And these exes now become problem yeah. when you get married. They're either cursing you or chasing you <laughs> to get you back. Or cursing you that so you wasted my time, you went to get married. <laughs> so um, there's no fixed time. Um, it depends on how long you guys have been friends and what quality of friendship you have. For instance, if you are seeing regularly and talking enough, in four, five, six months, you, could have, you can know each other very well compared to somebody that in a year they're talking off and on or they're talking surface stuff. So do you understand? But the key is that let there be friendship. It's always good for... Friendship is the foundation that will last. After the butterflies and co are gone, what is still left is that we are two people that are just friends. In fact, that's what marriage is. Two friends living together. That's what it is. There's no special thing about it. It's two friends living together. We talk, we share. We like to hang out. We like to talk to ourselves. We don't find it difficult to open up to each other. So let the friendship go. If in the course of this friendship, there's no fixed time. That's the truth. I can't tell you it's about two months. It all depends on the quality. For instance, some people's friendship is long distance. So you've been talking to this person virtually for one year. It can't be compared to somebody that they see each other every day for three months or every other day. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Yeah. So because I don't know the full extent of what level of friendship you have, again, this is why premarital counseling is good. A good counselor can ask you specific questions and be like, what do you know about this? How does he react to this? So once friendship has passed, then you start a relationship. Now, another mistake young people make is that they use dating or courtship to check each other out. That's not what it's for, unfortunately. Again, this is why we have so many exes. Because you date, stuff and it's not working. No, no, you're not supposed to be dating people to check them out. Courtship itself is not a, an institution by itself. It's just the period between when you agree to marry and when you do marry. That's what it is. It's not something I say, I'll date you and check you out. Say, ah. Because there's so much laxity about it. If somebody comes in and says, I want to date you, and he dates you for six years. You can say, thank you very much. <laughs> I have dated you. He has not lied. He has not broken your heart. He, from beginning, he said he's dating you. Yeah. And now that you are dated. Yeah. <laughs> or now dated. <laughs> Do you understand? This is the confusion. He never promised more than what he did. He said, I'm taking you out. And has he not taken you out? <laughs> now he's brought you back to your house. You see, so you see that there, there's no agreement in that. There's no definition in that. And that favors the guys. Like I told you in the morning, guys have no issue with time. Yes. A guy can play around till he's 45 and get married and start having children next year. You, you cannot afford that as a girl. So if, if somebody will come into your life, oh, I like you so much, I want to have a relationship. So which kind? Yes. Ask questions. I have a book here, 37 questions why women ask. Women don't ask. They're just so happy. I want to go out with you. I want you to live my life. You say yes. Yes to what? You say, I want to date you. I have dated you now. And there's no limit. You have dated for three solid years. You know, say thank you very much. It was nice. <laughs> they tell you, he has not lied. That's the truth. He made no promises. So be clear. Let's be friends enough. While we are friends, that's when we check each other out. Yeah. And in that level, if we find out this thing can't go anywhere, we can keep it at that, remain cordial. Because sometimes my even the person's friend you marry. But you see, unfortunately for us, we are dating. Dating everybody. So you have dated this one, you know me to have his friend, you like the friend, but of course he can't date you again because his friend has dated you. Real life story. I had a lady, I canceled, 
you know, very beautiful lady. She was doing her master's, brilliant, smart, beautiful, everything, spiritual. She met a guy, she wants to marry the guy. The guy too looks good, nice, everything is good. Only that she has had a relationship with the guy's brother. Many years ago, not even a relationship. They had kind of a fling. So it wasn't that they even dated. So that now they allowed them, even though everything worked, to move forward. So a lot of times, we are spoiling things by dating everybody we meet. Hello, hi, yes. <laughs> Some people, they are going to connect you to the real person you will marry. So you have to carry yourself with dignity. Make sure you don't cross boundaries. Keep it at friendship. Don't discuss the unnecessary sexual content with somebody you're not even married to. Keep it like that so that if this thing is meant to be friendship, it might be your brother I will even marry. Just like Pastor shared. This guy was serving the Lord in the pastor's house. Do you get that? You see, that's how real marriages happen. You just run into somebody. And if you don't conduct yourself well, you would have spoiled that relationship before the time. So, do friendship. When somebody wants to date you, say, what, what are we? What's, define the relationship. Okay, what, what do you mean by date me? We'll be going out. Say, we are friends. Let's be going out. Let's be going places now. Let's remain as friends. When you know what you want, then come and tell me. If I'm still available. See, ladies, men, men, men always react faster when they have something to lose. Most of you give guys the impression that they can do anything they like, and you're always here waiting. Wow. Let them know, okay, no, I'm not here for dating. You can, you're 27, you're not, you're not available for dating. You're available for marriage. See, I'm, 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 at, I'm at my age. <laughs> I'm not going, if maybe you're 21, maybe 19, you can be doing that. At 27, I'm not available for dating. You don't have to agree to everything. He has a right to make you an offer. You have a right to say whether the offer is working for you or not. So I'm saying, so at this age, what I'm looking for is somebody ready to marry. So God bless you, sir. Um, I, I think Sister Jennifer is ready for dating. There are other people that are looking for dating. Go there. But me, at this age in my life, I'm looking for a man that is serious about settling down. That's what I'm looking for. So thank you. God bless you. Thank you for asking. God bless you. If he likes you, he will step up. Men learn from you how to treat you. Men don't treat all women the same. That's what girls don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, is why, that is why you see a man, he will waste one lady's time for seven years, break up, and in one year, he has married another. Because this is what I'm saying, I'm not going to wait here for seven years. Yeah. We're either marrying or you go. Yeah. And he steps up immediately. You see a guy, he never buys this one one gift. Then he dates this one, he's spending his whole salary every month. Because this is why I'm saying, if you don't buy me gifts, don't come here. <laughs> Ladies, men learn from me how to treat you. They are not as emotionally developed as you are as a woman. So you're going you to literally teach them that this have to talk to me. If you're not going to call me, then I will not pick your call when you, are, when, you, when you are ready to call. I was like that when I started dating my wife. I didn't know that you have to call a woman every time. I told you men talk for information. I only call, if, I, if I see her on Monday and we're supposed to see her next Monday, I don't talk to her till next Monday. I'm saving all my gist. I have to live into gist. If I gist you during the week, what will I gist when you come? I'm serious. I didn't have gist. So I keep on my gist. So she will tell me, no, no, you can't, you can't wait till we see you again. You have to call me during the week. I say, okay, no problem. So I pick the phone and I'll call her during the week. Say, hey, how far? I just say, I hail you. She said, no, you can't hail me. I'm not one of your guys. You can't be hailing me. So she had to tell me, no, you have to, you know. So that's how I learned it. So when some of you are seeing me now, I know a lot. No, I, I wasn't like that. You, women teach you, they don't know how to teach the guy how to treat you. Say, no, if you, if, if you won't call me, if you won't talk to me in a whole day, whenever you are ready to talk to me, I will also not talk to you. He will get the message. But most women are too afraid. So he will, he, will, he will keep silent for one week, and whenever he starts talking, you continue. You are even eagerly ready to continue. You have endorsed it and taught him that that's okay. That's a, a acceptable behavior. So do good friendship. When he's asking you out, he should define what he wants. Do you want to get married or by just talking? If you want to get married, when? Are you looking at women say, but wouldn't that make me look desperate? See, your own strategy is more desperate. You know, most women's strategy play along, give everything, and hope that one day he will have mercy on me and give me what I want. Look, everybody knows you already want marriage. It's better you safeguard yourself. Don't let this guy waste your time for seven years, five years. Okay, you're pretending that's why women always when they propose it's a lie, it's a lie because they, they, most of them never thought it was going to happen. If you are really serious minded, it's not a lie. You'll be like, it's about time. It's two years now. It's about time. No, it's a lie. Most of the time I say it's a lie, you, you're already using a strategy. Your own strategy now is pretend I don't want marriage till whenever he has mercy on me. That's dangerous because after five years, he can say he doesn't want. 
That's too dangerous. It's better to define. What do you want? Oh, you want to, you want to date me? Oh, I'm not available for dating. I'm 27. What I'm actually out for now is marriage. So when you're ready for marriage, let me know. If I'm still available, I'll consider you. <laughs> and go. Now, if he's ready to step up, say, I want to marry. Say, when? It's a two years' time. I said, okay, you know what? Let's start that, but let's start counseling also. Let's have somebody speaking of ours. You see, there's some things you need to say that it's not you that will say it. You will tell, tell the counselor ahead of time. <laughs> that please discuss this issue when we are doing this. Yes. <laughs> and a guy, too, you can do that, too, if you have it concerns. That's what the counselor is there for. To be a middleman, a mediator. So you say, look, this two years can't work for me. Why does he want to wait two years? He has a job already. He said, I don't have all the money. That's why I'm here. We're helpers. <laughs> let's start together. Let me know your plan. Then I'll know where to come in. You see, women challenge men everywhere in the world. So don't be the person that just sit down watching him. Till if you leave a man, he will never be ready. He will never be ready. The only thing is ready for his sex. Not ready for commitment. Yeah, always ready for that. So you notice that when two people are dating, and that, men are always asking for what they want. Women are too shy. And you see, that's why some, even Christians, you see the man pressuring for sex. That's what he really, 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 really wants. He doesn't need the commitment. What's he doing with commitment? Taking care of you. He doesn't want to take care of you. That's responsibility. Do you understand? He wants, he wants sex. And you see, a woman is one that determines when sex will happen in the relationship. A man is one that determines when security will happen in the relationship. So that's why the woman shouts when they propose to her. The man is holding this, her security. So the day he gives her, she will shout, ah, ah, all her friends will shout, ah, ah. because the one thing men want everywhere in the world is security. That's why they shout like that. The one thing men want everywhere is sex. That's why the day you also offer him sex, either before marriage or in marriage, he too shouts like that, just like so you don't see it. Ah, ah. He shouts like that too. <laughs> All right, so do good friendship, do courtship. A good Christian courtship should be anywhere between six months and two years. Anything longer than that is, is, is not so, it's not the best. All right, it can happen, but it's not the best. Anywhere from six months and two years, if you guys have known yourselves. If you have known yourselves, give it some longer time, one year. But above all, please get a counselor. A person can ask you deliberate, specific questions to your own situation. Thank you. <laughs> Just one question, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yes. It's working, no? <laughs> yes. They work? Okay. <laughs> Pastor PK, you don't yeah. dazzle a person for here. <laughs> you are, there's oil on your head. <laughs> My question is to Pastor Mildred. Yeah, yes. You, you said you're, I'm sorry, I, there was a funny thing that happened. I just came home this evening or afternoon. Oh, right, right, and I opened my door and I looked up <laughs> and I'm like, Yeah. Who's this? It was standing right before me. I was like, I know you, sir. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, social media. I said, No, no, I know you. And I'm like, PK. I'm like, oh, PK. Yeah. Great. And, I, and I went upstairs and I told my wife that, Oh, imagine there's picture evidence, so you cannot say I was photoshopping <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so my question is yes. to you, Pastor um, Mildred. And um, my question is that your. Uh, Forgive me, because I don't really have so much time for social media because of my job. So, um, you said you're a marriage counselor. That's what you like do professionally, and um, you can't counsel both Christians and non-Christians. And then you basically use the opportunity to tell non-Christians that Jesus is the way it can work. Now, my question is this: Do we not have non-Christian homes that are working without Jesus? Working as in happy, happy, hundred percent happy, fulfilling purpose. Even Christian go they say, "Bros, how you they do? I'm teach me. Do we not have such? If we do have such, then what is the key?" Okay, <laughs> praise God. Um, you know, as my husband always says, it takes a lifetime to know if a marriage is really working or not. Um, and even the Christian marriages that you say are working, all of them have challenges. Okay, um, and I don't know, you know, I, I can't really say if, I mean, I don't know anyone that immediately just puts out their problems in public, you know. So for you to say that there are homes that, because the truth is, okay, let me, let me answer it this way. There are principles that make everything work, okay? Um, and even these unbelievers are using principles of love, and God is love. There's no other place that love comes from except God. So they may not be born again, but I can tell you that they're using principles, godly principles. Maybe they themselves have not been able to define it. If they are being patient with each other, that's love. If they are being kind to each other, that's love. Maybe they've not been able to define who it is from, but the source of everything good is still God. 
So that is the only way that it may be working for them. But when there is a challenge, the difference is this. There are two houses. That's what the Bible tells us. When there is a storm, it is only the one that is built on the rock that will stand. That's the difference between a Christian home and one that is not a Christian home. Stands, their marriage stands, irrespective of the challenges that the world throws at them. Same thing, Christians, some Christians actually know the principle, but they don't know the principle. Mm -hmm. And their marriage falls when the world hits them. Mm -hmm. So if, a, if the goal is for the, it, I don't know how to put the question, is the goal for the marriage to stand, and then what? So that you've answered your own question. You see, yes, you've answered your own question because you have to understand the marking scheme. The marking scheme. So the marking scheme for me to know that a marriage is working is whether it glorifies God. So that's exactly the issue there. It's not just about two of us being happy. What does God get out of it? God wants godly seed, not well-behaved children. There's a, you know, beyond just we're happy together or we're seemingly happy together. There's much more to it. So it's like saying that um, people who, uh, what's that, their common argument about musicians who are not tithing, but make, uh, what's that? Please let me explain that, that thing. Secular, you know how they say? Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's so okay. So what I'm trying to say is that it's the same, yes. it's the same thing when people make that argument of, oh, these people are not tithing. Yes, and there's a way Pasquet explains it. Okay, the guy has a lot of questions. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. Yes. okay. Maybe you should just ask it yeah, all. Yeah, they will tie it, yes. So, mm -hmm. I like the answer that glorifies God. Now, I am, for example, an atheist. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to go to my church and Yes, please allow him. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, now. Mm -hmm. I saw a lady and then I fell in love with her. Mm -hmm. We know the principles, we've done a lot of marriage counseling, blah, blah, blah. And then we apply those, those principles. Yeah. And um, our marriage, we're happy. Now, to us, the ultimate, the marking scheme, like you said, between us is that I fulfill you and you fulfill me. Mm -hmm. I glorify you, you glorify me. In a way, both of us are the gods of this world. Oh, beautiful. So once my home is glorified, our home is glorified. <laughs> Yeah, I'm yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 go ahead. I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. Both of us are the gods in this world. It's just like God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, and the Spirit. So, me and God the Father are like the man. I'm God the Father. I'm Yes, I'm God the Father, I'm the man, because the man is the head of the family. And we know the Godhead is God the Father. Then God the Son is the middleman. Then the spirit is, you know, our communal, our communal spirit, the spirit of oneness. So why 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 are you telling me about God? What do you what, what, what is your Jesus Christ? My my, my I'm please just follow me. Don't don't say I'm I'm being blasphemous. Just follow the train of thoughts. Open mindedly. I beg everybody in the house. Can yeah, actually but summarize, hear you. summarize, yeah. summarize what you're saying. The story is that I, as a man, my, me as a, and my wife, we are, we are doing well in purpose outside there. In our home, we are doing well. No problem outside or inside. How to preach Christ? Mm. Yeah. Right. Have, you really, have you ever really, well, maybe I'll let us skip, but have you ever really actually had a conversation with some of these people? These people who you claim are athe atheists, because yeah. I've had some of them sit in my counseling sessions, and it's not the way you make it sound at all. It's not the way you make it sound. They don't have this. So this one, the man is the head, the woman. No, they don't have those kind of things. That is the scriptural that we're both structure. equal. That's a scriptural principle. A lot of them don't agree with that. 
And I'm telling you for a fact, we have sat with these people. They believe we're equals. So what makes you better than me? Why should you be the head and I'm not? So they have those kind of arguments. And once there's an issue, they're out. What compels us to stay, what constrains us to stay, is the love of God. Yeah. I've been with these people and I've spoken to some of these people. It just, it just seems like that on the outside. It's all optics. A lot of them are broken. That's why you see that a lot of them who seem to be making money, doing well, and all of a sudden they commit suicide. There's an emptiness still. There's still an emptiness inside. So or sometimes these things look good, especially in the movies. But if you talk to most of them one-on-one, -on -one, you will know that they are still searching for some kind of meaning. All right. All right. We have tried. <laughs> all right. So can Let's, let's keep it in context, uh, because I don't want us to go through that trail too much. It's a different argument. Um, but for me, the summary of saying God or not and purpose or not is that if you say there is no God, this means that you agree that we all came from nothing. If we all came from nothing, it means everything we are doing here is nothing, and it means where we are going is nothing. So you need to know that that's what you think, that you think you're nothing, and you're going nowhere. So... If you think that, then, you know, that's a different discussion. Uh, for, for us, as believers, you know, it's like saying this building came here from nothing. That it just appeared here. All of us know that definitely. It's too organized. This light coming on, this power here, it's too organized for it to just have happened. We know somebody created it. All right? So that's, how, that's what we believe. And it's fine that you think you're, you're an atheist for now. And yes. And the thing about atheists and these beliefs is that your whole identity is based on something not existing. That means you actually acknowledge that this thing exists, just that you don't want to agree it exists. You are still building your life around that. And it is somebody that doesn't believe there is God. So in your definition, God is inside your sentence of your definition of who you are and what you believe. So you're already stuck. And you used, you are the head. You are the, you are, that's, that's a scriptural, that, that thing didn't just appear from nowhere. It's the Bible, Yakuti. So, my brother. You should actually have conversations with these people. You will know yes. what I'm talking about. That there's an emptiness. They want Yes, so let, let's stay on relationship today because that one is a different, mm -hmm. it's a different lane. But thank you for your question. Good one. Good one. Amen. Yes. Thank you very much. I, I'm thinking, can I read three questions at the same time because of time or we should just read them one after the other? <laughs> Some that are alike. Except they are alike. Together. Okay, so I'm going to screen them. So I've got two questions that look alike. So the first one says, is it okay to explore sexual connection, not necessarily having intercourse, just to check if you connect on a romantic level? And then the second one. It's a good question. It's a sincere question. It's a sincere question. Amen. One house, guys. So, so, so the second question looks like that, and it says, can we cordial as people in a relationship? For instance, can we say, see in a movie and we just cordial, nothing more? <laughs> All right. You want to go? Amen. Okay. Um, it's a common... Warehouse, guys. It's a common scenario, and um, to be in all fairness, this is a major thing with young people and a temptation for people that are single. I get it, but you need to also know the repercussion and the consequences of those things. Um, I don't know how you want to explore each other sexually without having sex. You know, <laughs> I don't know how you want to do that. Um, and secondly, you must understand again that when the, when the Bible or God is saying that you should you know be wary of premarital sex, it's not because they wicked God. It's just because he knows how powerful sex is. It's not something usually you have the power to control. So usually the only advice God gives our sex is to run. Because once you get on that lane, you usually will not have what it takes to control it. It doesn't work that way. All right? It's like a wildfire. Once it starts, it's not really up to you to put it off. It doesn't work like that. So um, what you're looking for, sexual exploration, it, it doesn't matter because in, re in real marriage, there's nothing like sexual compatibility. There's always only sexual commitment. Because whoever you marry, <laughs> you know, this, again, this I think young single people don't know that what's going on on the other side of the fence. They think once we just get married, if we're compatible now, we'll continue remaining compatible. There's no such thing. Life happens. Children will come. Work will come. Um, age will come. 
So your yes, sex you, 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 your your desire of sex will, will always vary. So there's nothing like both of you being compatible. No such thing. You will constantly be committed to pleasing each other at whatever level. That's what you will need. So you, trust me. I know when you're saying you think ah this sex was good. No, when you get married, life happens. Life happens. It's not it's, good couples are compatible by chance. Great couples are compatible by choice. So that's what really does happen. You have to now start adapting to your spouse. You'll find out that somebody that liked a certain thing at the beginning of the marriage, two years down line, can totally be irritated by that thing. So you will keep evolving. So don't waste your time checking compatibility. No such and even if you're checking compatibility, okay, how many people will you check? Yeah. So you check Sister Jane. Yes. After two months, say, we are not quite compatible. <laughs> so you check on that sister. At the end of the day, you will be confused. Apart from the fact that you might have children everywhere. <laughs> you know? So, so there's, there's no, it's a no-brainer, really. There's no way that can be God's way. Uh, you know? And God is not even talking about celibacy. Because young people think it's about celibacy. It's about sexual purity. So it even start from your mind. So, so you, the person asking the question, your mind is already being attacked. Because you think, I'm not doing something physically, but I'm, I'm playing around with my mind. No, God wants you to even be sexually pure. There's a great difference between sexual purity and celibacy. Celibacy is that I'm not having a physical action. Sexual purity is that I'm keeping myself pure, spirit, soul, and body. So if you're even on that lane, trust me, you can't even be thinking about this question. It won't even cross your mind. Because you understand that you, you, lust can have a dangerous effect on your mind, okay? So please, um, God doesn't want you to do it, and it's for your own good. Because every sexual experience affects your real experience in marriage. And just because you say, okay, we're applying to marry. Many people have been applying to marry and eventually didn't marry. But they've had too many sexual encounters. By the time they marry, they find that they're finding it difficult to adapt to whoever they married. You see, so that's, that's why people, I'm telling you, people that have broken marriages or broken sub because they say, the man does not last. And I always say, what's the scriptural, <laughs> constitutional time a man should last? It's something you picked from somewhere. Something you picked from somewhere. Either pornography or your past boyfriend or past girlfriend. There's, it's not, there's no scripture. If you're a virgin and you marry this person, however, it's lasting. <laughs> it's long lasting enough for you. And both of you explore each other there and build your commitment to each other. All right? I wanted to add. Okay, I just wanted to add the fact that um, it's important that you develop self control before you get married. Because just because you get married doesn't mean that you won't be attracted to other people. So if you can't manage your sexuality now, mm -hmm. what happens when you get married and you're attracted to someone else? Mm -hmm. And you feel like kissing someone else or you feel like cuddling with someone else? What do you do then? So it's from the self-control that you develop. In fact, married people are more attractive than single people. That's what most people don't know. Especially <laughs> men. Married men are more attractive. The minute that you're married, you become a vision of what a woman wants. Mm -hmm. Forgetting that someone else is doing the work. And that can confuse you, you know. So you, you find yourself all of a sudden you're desirable. All the girls are looking at you and it's not really you. It's the work that has been done on your life. So, so you need to... So now is the time to begin to build self-control because you will need it more after the marriage. Yes, and for the part of it that should we cuddle, should we do all those things, the Bible said nobody puts fire in their bosom and not be born. You know, have you seen anybody that puts on the gas, cooking gas, and you say, what are you cooking? He say, nothing, no. I'm just putting it on. Nobody does that. The purpose for kissing and smooshing is to get you aroused. That's what differentiates you from animals. Animals are programmed to have sex without anything. But you as a human being, God is expecting that you're doing other things with your life. That like you're not always thinking about sex. So when you want to have sex, you need, actual, you need some foreplay to get in the mood. So the purpose of that kissing and smooshing is to get you in the mood for sex. So how do you get yourself in the mood and say, okay, we're going to leave ourselves? If you didn't have control to not to do it that one, you won't have control when you're already aroused. All right? This sexual urge is powerful. It's not something you can put on and put off. No, it only has one button, only on. <laughs> it doesn't have off. <laughs> so it's better, it's better to build a foundation of sexual purity in your marriage. Trust me. I, I, I don't know whether you are getting it, but again, we cancel too many married couples. You'll find out that the foundation catches up with you. Sometimes it can be 10 years into the marriage. The man has no sense of sexual purity and faithfulness because there was never a foundation of that. You taught him from beginning he can take what is not his. Or taught her from the beginning she can take what's not hers. So when they get married, of course, they, marriage doesn't change you. Yeah. It's still you. So you're used to taking something that is not yours. What's going to restrain you when you're married from taking something that is not yours? Nothing. Because that's even how you're The sexual appetite you have is the one that you like to hide and do. Yeah. So now that you're married and it's free, you're not attracted to your wife. But there's no hiding involved. It's open. It's open. They blow whistle. It's free. 
So you still want the one you need to hide and do. Because the thing about sexual urge is that you have built your brain. Those of you that know how the brain works, your brain has built, that's the only way your brain gets aroused. The same thing with pornography. That's how dangerous it is. Once you start on those parts, it starts affecting your brain. And once your brain is affected, there's nothing anybody can do except you really get a strong therapist and go through strong therapy. If not, your brain is only aroused one way. There was a guy they found out that was masturbating uh, when he was young. And he got married, he could not have sex with his wife. Except there was a pair of boots in the room where he could sit. And they said, what's the link between boots and you're getting aroused? They found out that when he was young and he started masturbating, that was, those were the boots he always used to wear. So he, in his mind, he can't get sexually aroused except he, he's looking at those boots. So that's how your mind, your mind is like a machine like that. So you, when God says keep away from some things, he's not trying to be wicked. He's saying, look, this thing will program you in a way you can't even enjoy the real blessing when it starts. You can't enjoy it. All right? So when you start a relationship, one of the things you guys must define or talk about is sexual purity. If you can't maintain it before marriage, 99.9% .9 of the time, even when you not get married, you find out you still can't. And temptations don't stop because you are married. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. So the next question says, I have a guy I am in a committed relationship with, but my fear is how do I approach my parents with a conversation? Because I think they might have a challenge with his appearance. He has dreads. How do I approach the issue? Come again. Okay. So I have a guy yeah. I am in a committed relationship, relationship with. Yes. But my fear is how do I approach my parents with yes. a conversation? Yes. Because I think they might have a challenge with his appearance. He is has we're talking about? dreads. <laughs> How do I approach the issue? Wow. I don't know. Um, if you are really sure, if you are really, really sure your parents are die hard and they will never agree, well, one option can be to suspend the dress till we marry and continue from there. You know, if a guy loves you, that's not, a, that's not such a crazy sacrifice. You know, something you can do. Um, if he can't do it, then you need to sell other sides of him. If he's a brilliant student, if he's a genius in something, before they see him, <laughs> let them fall in love with him before they see him. You see, anybody can receive any news if it's broken to them gradually. What causes problem when you break big news to somebody in a big way? Their first re um, reaction is to resist. You know, when, when the whole world shut down, if they had told us they were going to close the world for one year, everybody would have said never. They told us one week. From there, two weeks. We're already getting used to staying at home. They said, go okay, one more week. Then from there, one month. And they kept showing us the figures of COVID going up. We too wanted to stay at home. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? But if they had come from the beginning and say, hey, we don't trust this disease. All of you are going to cut, shut down your school, shut down everything for one year. Shut down church for one There will be a revolt. Yeah. So anybody can take any news if it's broken down to them gradually. For instance, if you have a loved one that is seriously ill, if they tell you, oh, this person has cancer or has one terminal disease, you know, you are adjusting. It won't be the same if they just tell you overnight that, hey, this guy is dead. If they tell you, oh, he's sick, you are adjusting your mind at this sickness. So you are moving gradually. It's how easy. Say, it's not getting too well. You are adjusting. So by the time they say he's dead, you, you are already expecting. So your mind has adjusted. Human beings are flexible when we are well programmed. So don't hit them with the news. Don't just bring it from nowhere. Say, daddy and mommy, this is I want to... <laughs> Don't just bring you from nowhere <laughs> with, his, with his tight t-shirt and, and dress. Don't do that. So talk about him a lot. So when, when your dad says something, say, ah, that's exactly what Jide says. Oh. <laughs> but I say, who is Jide? He says, my friend, one of my friends. Or if it's a girl, the same thing. Ah, that's exactly what that girl says. Oh, is that that? You know, let him, so when he says, so this person is your friend. Looks very smart. I say, yeah, yeah, he's very smart like you. <laughs> and he encourages me like you. Anytime maybe Jide goes to drop you somewhere, you ask, how did you get to the station? He said, oh, Jide dropped me. <laughs> so he says, Jide, he says, just a friend. He dropped me. So they would have gotten acquainted with this guy. They would have known this guy. You know, sometimes if you can even take the battles to the gate yourself. Go and tell your daddy that, lad, if there's a good guy, well behaved, loves God and everything, but he has dreads. <laughs> Is he a good person to consider? In a neutral, non-threatening atmosphere, he will say his real mind. That well, he can be a good person. People say he has a good job. He's a genius. He says, hey, well, he... hey, by the time you bring Jide. <laughs> 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 you 
they don't understand. All right, so don't break the news to them in a hard way. And even if you don't agree, don't resist them. Don't fight. Don't declare war. You, you empower people that are against you when you declare war. Say you have heard. Say you will also talk to him if they don't agree. But, you know, take everything gently and slowly because you know that the person is more important than the hairstyle. The lifestyle is more important than the hairstyle. So sell other aspects of him that is sellable and pray and be patient and I think they will come around. Worst case scenario, I, pop the dress, grow it after I'll, the wedding. <laughs> if I'll just add to that, because when, um, when Pastor Kia and I started at first, my parents were so against ah. it. In fact, my father told him to his face, that yes. there's no way you will marry. It's not possible for you to marry my daughter because I didn't raise her to master's level to be teaching Sunday school. Yes. So, I mean, told me to my first face. time he was meeting him, he told yeah. him off. Yes. Um, but one thing I know, and I, and I mean, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I really think that we have the God factor. So, you see, if, if you don't want firewood to catch fire, what do you do? You wet it. So, I wet my parents with prayer. By the time my parents were now agreeing, even they were confused. So my father that was not helping me to plan against my mother. That let's do the wedding because they were insistent. You, my parents are Catholic. You must mind the Catholic church. He must be baptized. Must be. I'm like, how does that even make sense? It's a, a pastor should go and do catechism and be baptized. How does that make sense? You know, my, my mom was adamant. She will not take communion. They will ban her. She will not do. She was just going on and on. And she traveled. My dad just called me and said, um, are you a Catholic? I said, no. He said, so why does your mother want you to get married in Catholic church? How does this even make sense? I said, even me, daddy, I don't understand. It makes sense. <laughs> And then he says to me, oh, you know, there's this chapel in Unilag. They do both their Catholic and Protestant services there. We can print the card and make it seem as if it's the Catholic church. My father was the one planning with me. Before my mother came back from her trip, we had printed card. We had moved. It was when she got there on that day, she realized that. Uh -uh. Where is the priest? Where is the... Well, we are there. We already got the marriage. So prayer... I think it's something you should not underestimate. Yes. And um, <laughs> you can clap. Thank you. And in our own story, again, another thing that helped is other people liked me. So they got other people in the family that liked me. So the, one of the brothers, the sister, sister people like my, that, my that can speak yes, in the day of battle. <laughs> yes. You must have someone who is that yes. voice in your family. Other people that, yeah. that like. So let them like this guy too. Mm. So that by the time the issue of decision comes, they too will put in a word that, ah, ah, I know the guy. Oh. No, forget that he's dread. He's just Shakarao. He's a good boy. Good boy. I know him. <laughs> 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 so if you have aunties and uncles, let him take you to go and visit them and just visit. And they say, ah, who is this boy? Oh. He say, ah, uncle, it's one boy that's interested in me. Oh. This is, you know, let them already know him and like him. All this we speak. So that's what happened in that case. That told me my face, you can never marry my daughter. Forget about it. It's impossible. Um, I didn't train her to go and do masters for you. For her to come and be teaching Sunday school. When he heard I was a pastor, I said, forget it. He told me to my face, our first meeting. You know, and that thing is that the couple two must always be together. What I discovered is when people are facing challenge of parents or whatever, I found that they are not even together. Yeah. So one person can just abandon the other one. Ah, my parents didn't agree. I'm going. No. But if you stay strong together, pray together, stand together, you'll find out that later your parents will come around. All right? Yeah. So the next question, is it realistic to love another man besides your husband? It depends on <laughs> Realistic. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you I don't know whether the, the question is is it realistic or is it right or is it possible? It's well, right. If it's possible, what if you ask you whether it's possible, it's you can become emotionally involved with another man besides your husband. Now, the mm. definition of love is what yes. I question there. You yes. know, some people think that love is a feeling, feeling, and it's not. You can have strong feelings for someone who is yes. not your husband. Of course, if your husband is annoying you, and somebody is treating you nice, you will fall in love. Yeah. If you have an emotional need, your husband is not meeting, and you are at the office, and this guy is meeting it all the time, yes. of course, you will start to feel those things that people call love. So yes, it's possible. Very, yes. very possible. That's what causes affairs. That's what infidelity is really about. It's not so, people do, sometimes infidelity is not just a one night stand, it is an emotional affair, and that, those are the hardest to break. Mm -hmm. So it's possible, but it's not right, yeah. it's oh, dangerous, yes, it's, dangerous. It's, it's unfaithful. Yeah. All right, because the real meaning and essence of love, like I said the first day I came, that it's a proposal. You are saying, I want to be, I'll be committed to you, to you, in spite of the fact that I have other options forever, mm -hmm. other options will remain forever. So marriage is like saying you want to pick a, 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 a cable TV and you want to watch only one channel, even though you know that there are a lot of other channels. And those times, once in a while, they're doing very interesting things. Saying, but you keep watching this, your own repeat. They are showing the CNN news repeat. And you keep watching, you find it interesting like that. 
So that's what it's a commitment. Love is just as young people think love is a feeling, it's not a feeling. Your feeling will always fluctuate. You can even have a feeling for somebody that even meeting any need for you. You just pass. You can just have a feeling for him. But you stay faithful. That's what real love is about. Mm -hmm. Okay. What can be done to a man who doesn't like to communicate with his partner but tell his deep fears to his mom and doesn't honor agreement? Yeah. <laughs> the question is what can be done to what can be done to him I think it's what well, can be done for him because what can be done to him is not, it's not, it's what, not what you want to I'm <laughs> <laughs> buying feeding bottle and give him but that's not what should be done to him what should mm. be done for him is what they mean to us so I don't know that, that's, that's an interesting thing when, when a man is not you see like I we discussed with PD and Co you know some men get really attached to their moms because their moms really love them, you know, the way men like unconditionally, you know, so they are used to that and they just can't love another woman well enough. You know, if that mom is not mature enough to release him, mm. because some moms, you know, have that thing, they want to keep the boy. Women are territorial emotionally, men are territorial positionally. Mm. So this is why all the problems in life is mother-in-law problems, not really father-in-law problems. Uh, men are territorial positionally. Women are territorial emotionally. So when you come to marry somebody's daughter, she's thinking, eh, hey, this is my son, that because she has been using um, the son to fulfill her emotional needs. Her husband is not emotional. Wow. So he has been using that. So now you want to come and carry the only thing she's using to hold herself. So she will fight you directly or, or indirectly. All right. So um, don't, don't try to act like you are competing with his mom because the more you tell him that, oh, your mom is a servant, the more he will go and hold his mom because the mom understands. All right. So you just keep showing what you can offer. Keep loving him. Be understanding. Start learning all these things. Be nice. Advise. Um, agree. Accept. Love him unconditionally too. You know, as long as he's not doing anything toxic in terms of beating you or cheating on you, you have to just be patient through this process. Because you're the one that married him. I'm sure the signs were there when you were dating. You felt you could handle it. Be handling it. <laughs> yes. Don't give up. Don't give up. You, will, you have Zoe. You have Zoe. So don't give up. <laughs> don't give up. <laughs> There's favor in Zoe. <laughs> There's direction in the way, so don't give up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you just be nice. Make sure you're not a rebel. Make sure you're not trying to fight the mom. That won't help. Um, of course, prayer always, always helps. You know, then, um, you know, just love him another patiently. Thing yes. is you have a relationship with his mom. That yes, may also, that's another thing. Yes, Jump on it. Too. That may be another place to start. You know, start to find a way to learn things from her. Yes. You know, I, I'm always fascinated when people say, Oh, my mother in law is in this, and you're angry, she can cook something you cannot cook. Go and learn it now. Mm. It's not that difficult. Just ask her. Interestingly, those things make them feel special. Mm -hmm. There's one particular sauce that my mother in law makes, and my husband always liked it since he was a little boy. She came to us one day and said, Mama, teach me this sauce now. She said, Hey, you won't learn now. Oh, yeah, stand now. But you know hard. I say, Mama, something where only you sabi cookie hard. She said, hey, oh, yeah, stand now. It's yes. nothing. Just fry it like this. Just do like this, like that. Eh, taste and be sweet. I say, Mama, hey, no wonder. No, you sabi cook this thing. She said, okay. And I learned it from there, and everybody's happy. <laughs> you know? she, she, felt, yeah. she, that, she felt that validation. Yes. That emotional thing she's getting from your husband. Give her some yes. so she can release him small. Yes. Yes. So it's not that hard. She won't see you as a threat. Mm. Yes. So it says, hello, Pastor. I am 30 years old and from a broken home. Mm. I have PTSD from the experience, mm -hmm. and part of me is not looking forward to getting married. Mm -hmm. But I desire to have children, and I plan to take in when I'm financially stable, mm. whether with or without a man. What is your advice? My advice? is don't do it. I think what you need to do is get counseling for the trauma that you've been through. Broken people will still raise broken children. It's not only broken marriages that come from broken people. If you do this with a child, you're going to damage that child. And the child is going to suffer from what you are dealing with. You are the one that has a problem with marriage. Don't make it the child's problem as well. So what I would say is you get counseling um, get, I mean, and then start to look around you for healthy marriages. You know, what you be, behold, you become. So because you've been through all of that in your home, I think that you should also consider looking at, there are also great marriages out there. You know, be around some of that. But get counseling. You need help with that trauma. It's very important. All right. Yeah. Okay. Do you wait for someone who is still himself, especially... <laughs> 
if you are settled and ready for marriage. What I want to say is not good. So I think you should say because I mean, you say you are ready. You are ready to get married, but is there anybody who's ready to marry you now? That's the guy that's finding himself. <laughs> and so my issue is. If you leave this one that's trying to find himself, is there somebody who marry you now? No, no, that's what we're asking. That's what we're going to now. You should stay with this one. That's you go first stand somewhere now. Tell her don't I'm bad. No, no, you can't stand there. You can't. You can't stand because there. Because they're the end. It's kind of what you know what I mean, ladies. They cha they challenge if, you that. No, my problem is Pastor K is mm. she's making it sound as if there's another option. No. Okay, you just want to go. Eh, no problem. Right now. Yeah, because she says she should wait for the guy trying to find herself. Is he worth it? Is the question. Yeah. Is he worth the wait? See, for her to be asking, the finding. Then she knows the answer. It's taking okay. long. Then she knows the answer. Because women are naturally believers. If the guy's finding is looking like we are getting nearer the finding, she won't even be asking the question. Mm. She will even put her support into it. Okay. The issue with those indefinite findings is that some people really are not going to find themselves. So what they need is a coach, a therapist, a counselor, something like that, somebody that will help them find themselves, not you. Because you, your own motive for helping them find themselves is that you want them to marry you. So it's, it's not, you're not really giving them selfless help. You're giving them selfish help. It's about you. And by the time you even get them, you, and you now find out that it's a project. Like we said in the morning, there's between project and prospect. Uh -huh. Project means you continue building and building and building. You might never even reap the fruit of your labor. You might never do it. So I want advice to stay on there if he's finding himself. Let him connect with other male figures, other people that have found themselves. Let them coach him and teach him how to find himself. All right? Give it some time span. Don't just stay there indefinitely. Like I mentioned in the morning, I know people that have dated for 10 years and did not marry you. Dated on that person, two people, 10, 10 years each. <laughs> yes, those of you that are not here in the morning, I shared that. And the person I'm talking about is still not married today. So imagine if that lady was waiting for him to find himself. Both of them would have passed childbearing age by now. So the women have entered such things and the guy is indefinitely finding himself. All right? Yes, every man will know it perfect, but you will see the moves. I had nothing when I married my wife. That's the truth. I was, a, I was a pastor, yes, but I didn't have money. So, but you could see that I was doing something and she, she knew that if she came to partner with me in this thing, it will, it will pick up, and which is exactly what has happened. All right, so you can see that, okay, this thing, okay, you, you, you're selling phones, for instance. How many requests do you get in a day, in a month? How many inquiries do you even get? We can see that this, you have been doing something with your life for the past two years. We can monitor that. But if for two years you have nothing to show at all, then that's a problem. We're not saying it must be successful, but can you show any sign of, we started in 1982, yeah. this is 1992, is there anything to show? That's all we're asking. That's all. all okay, right? but please make sure you're not being impatient, because I know some girls. Mm. Mm. That balance is important. Make sure that you're not being impatient. Sometimes it may take a little while for a guy to fully figure it out. But while he's figuring it out, have you figured it out? Because sometimes we make it seem as if she says she's ready. ready. She's ready. Ah, I don't know because ready. you know, Pastor okay, because we're not sitting down in a session with person, <laughs> so I can't get details. Yes. Someone that says she's ready may just think she's ready because she's old enough. She may not have anything she's bringing to the table. So she's waiting for a guy who is ready to come and pay all her bills. This. And it doesn't look like he's quickly doing it the way okay. she wants. At so all I'm saying is let's be balanced about this. Be sure that you're also not being impatient. But if he's wasting your time two years and he hasn't, he's still planning she to... She says she's 30, like they find your way out of yes, there. Hmm. Like I said, it's not like she has an option. <laughs> you see, but sometimes, sometimes you won't know you have an option because you're still involved somewhere. Yeah. You are not vacant now. I think this is the challenge that we don't have all the details. Yeah. That's yes. it. Yeah. Me? You are 30? It's a gamble. Because any moment from now, you are going to enter Evening. evenings. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. You That's the sincere truth. If you are 25, I can have that conversation with you that say, okay, check whether you still have that. If you are 30, sister, hmm. things, get, things get a bit different after that. Things get a bit different after that. Like I said in the morning, your eligibility, your eligible guy is available for you as your age is, that's the practical truth, okay? I know God can do all things. There's the faith side, and I'm a faith person, so I believe that. But I'm just telling you now, the natural stage first. Yeah, as things are going age-wise, options of young eligible guys are reducing. It's just how life is. So, if you're 30, 
quickly get see a counselor basically yes let them ask you some important questions they have and to ask you questions know if this is worth details, yes right? if this is worth waiting for it's dangerous for her to step on. out of this and then next month the boy will go and marry somebody else yeah. because he has just made it and she didn't wait when he's not he made was it to the said he's finding himself <laughs> <laughs> he's <laughs> lost <laughs> is he lost <laughs> This guy. Because you know these things yes, happen. No, no. Yeah. Then the guy will say, When I was down, you didn't wait for you, you were not there for me. Then why am I somebody who Let her get cancer because we don't even know how many years she has invested so far. That's it, too. So she needs yes, to. She, needs to she might have invested please. already. Thank you, sir. Yes. Um, the next question I prefer having a long distance relationship. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? I'm a lady. A lady prefers long distance relationship. All right. You definitely um, have um, issues you need to resolve because marriage is about proximity. Two cannot lie together and be warm. It cannot be warm except they lie together. So um, you're going to be living in the same house with somebody forever. So if you are needing space all the time, it's something you need to deal with. All right? Don't get married, please. You have something to deal with. Because, see, Pastor, I can't count how many couples I know that actually have two houses. Oh. This is it's a common trend now in Nigeria. That's why once the man is stable financially enough, he will literally rent two houses. One for his wife and kids. Another way he can do anything he wants to do. Two full houses. Oh. This is not that. Full house too. So this is already somebody that would most likely do that if he's financially stable. So don't, don't, there's already a problem. Okay? My just proximity two will lie together and be one. We must stay together. Two shall become one. All right. Next question. Mm -hmm. How do you work on a marriage if your spouse is not willing to work on the marriage with you? Go ahead, Alan. This is one of the most common questions we get. And in fact, it has become a burden for me. Um, I think that a lot of women lose themselves in marriage. Um, they're... they're the truth is that you can't really force. So the person most likely asking this question is the woman, right? Is the woman that is asking the question? No, this, the, it didn't specify the gender, but it's it sounds likely, like a woman. Most likely the woman. Most times, <laughs> most times is the woman because men don't really see marriage as a need, so they don't really want to put effort into doing anything about it. Even when when there's been an affair when you want them to come in for counseling, it's usually the woman who wants to do all the work and the man is just, hey, I'm still here, I've not said sorry, what is it, it didn't mean anything, it's not a big deal. But you know, we have to invest work. Um, I don't know, it's become, a, it's become a huge challenge in recent times. Um, well, what we usually say is you first come in for counseling, right? And yeah. we start to work with you. Um, from there, we, when you, sometimes one of two things happens. Your partner sees this change, and then they're a bit interested. Sometimes even during the session, we'll have you do it in the room where your partner is. He may not be interested, but he's listening. You know, there are ways around these things. So I think first see a counselor. If we can find out what the real issue is, then we can know how to go about it. You know, that's, so I can't give you a blanket answer here. Because there are different issues that will make someone not want to be involved. If, for instance, if it's infidelity, some men won't come because they're ashamed. Some men won't come because they're proud. You know, there are different ways to deal with these issues. If it's that, he also just generally doesn't like counseling. There are also other ways. So, I don't know. But it's not even just counseling. Say, work on the marriage. So, it's not necessarily counseling. I don't even know what the issue is. Work on it in what way? Is it mm. that he's not emotionally available? Is he it just that doesn't want not? to work on improving the marriage. Because she was not happy yesterday. If when, I say what I want to say again now, it's prayer. I've told you before, the real work is before marriage. It's in picking the right person. When you get married, men are not even externally motivated. A man only does what he wants to do. You can't really motivate a man externally to do something he doesn't want to do. That's why women will sleep with a man, give him money, do everything, and he will still not marry you. But a woman, you can easily win her over. Her birthday buy gifts, yeah, give her friends gifts, people that will vote on your behalf, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. And once you, once you start doing that, her heart will start softening towards you. But men are not like that. So it takes a lot. And that's why sometimes I believe, because the Bible says that the heart of the king is in God's hands. So the heart is in God's hands, not in your hand. So it's only God that can turn it. 
So that's why I say prayer is still the last last. Yeah, and you still come and meet there. Prayer. Yeah, and develop yourself basically. Mm -hmm. So a lot of women tie their whole lives to marriage. So when is marriage not working, they break down. Um, my wife has a course she does called um, self rediscovery. Um, we do it for women particularly when because when the marriage is looking like it's not working, most women they've not they've invested their whole life building the marriage and not building themselves. All right, so um, build yourself. If it's not working on it, um, are you financially capable? Um, work on your physique. Be, be your fine self. Be who you used to be before. What, what, what were your dreams before you met this man? All right? The thing about men, again, is that they are likely to get motivated. They see that you're actually living life well without them. You look attractive again to them. But when you look like, I'm broken down, please don't leave me. I'm going to die without you. It doesn't work for men. You don't beg men into changing. In the world of men, begging doesn't count because they will do what they want to do. So you need to be attractive again. Build yourself physically, intellectually, emotionally, spiritually. Develop yourself. All right, be attractive again. And you know what? If he's not interested very soon, other people will start being interested because you look good. When he sees that, yeah, this guy is becoming very marketable, he will start thinking twice. All right? And wait, wait, wait it out. Sometimes marriages go through seasons. So if you're patient enough, sometimes seasons come around and things get better, you know? So, yeah. Next question, sir. It says, what should a woman do Go ahead. Okay, can I continue? Okay. What should a married woman do who the husband just decided to walk away from the marriage just like that? Mm. Almost two years now. Can she remarry, move on, or just wait? Okay, definitely she should um, she should start getting counsel by now and deciding what to how to move forward. There are three instances scripture kind of supports divorce. Um, abandonment is one of them. If the unbeliever wants to depart, let him depart. Mm -hmm. All right? Abuse is another one. Adultery is another one. All right? So um, she has both scriptural and legal grounds to start considering divorce. So I think at this stage, she should um, consider moving on. No need to just keep waiting eternally. For pray, get the counselor and also pray to be sure that's the right step to take. Once you have prayed and you feel peace about it, please, by all means, you know. Yeah. How do you continue to keep this spark in your marriage? With the spark plug. <laughs> <laughs> plug it into the <laughs> Spark plug. Um, like we said in the morning, go back to some of the things you used to do. Um, plan more quality time. Plan more vacations. Find mutual things both of you are interested in. Find out what the evolving needs of your partner is and start meeting it, you know, invest in your marriage, pour into the marriage the way you used to pour into it. Structure your time better. Because mostly what has happened to you is that life has happened. So you are meeting every other person's needs, your children, your workplace, other things, and you're not meeting each other's needs. So restructure your life and keep the fire burning here. Yeah. And make sure you're speaking each other's love languages. Yeah. Okay, sorry, this handwriting is interesting, so I might mm -hmm. start to... Just speak in tongues as you're led. <laughs> it says... If in marriage, the original design was man to be the head over the wife mm. and not lord over her, why does the punishment of the woman in Genesis 3.16 say that the man will, will lord with authority over the woman like it was not originally intended and submission came as a result of the fall? Okay, I understand what you're trying to say. Um, submission didn't come as a result of the fall. What they were talking about here is the fact that um, if you need to compare it, you know, like Pastor will always say, don't pick a scripture in isolation. Read the whole story. Um, everything was going fine. When man sinned, God did not actually even curse them. God was just informing them of how things are going to be now. All right? And if you notice, in the morning I told you that men are work-oriented, women are family-oriented. If you notice, God told the man the things that will happen to him. He said, now you will suffer more. Because I know, I know the thing that concerns you in all these things is work. He said, work will be harder now. And he told the woman, family too will be harder now. He didn't tell them the same thing. You never see God tell me a woman the same thing in scripture. It never does. Because the way they see life is different. So he told the man, you, your concern is work. The ground will be troublesome now. But he didn't tell the man about family. It's not a concern. Man won't mind. Even if, there, if he goes away, he'll be fine. He'll go back to the garden where he was. <laughs> but if he said now, family will be difficult for you. You, your desire will be so strong towards your husband that he can take advantage of you, which is happening everywhere in the world. That's why women will still see those kind of men and still go marry them. So the key is that the blessing has come to erase those two things. 
So the same way now, the Bible says the blessing of the Lord, they make it rich. And added no sorrow. The sorrow is the same word used in sorrow in Genesis, the same word used in Proverbs. So um, the same way as a woman now, you're not really, when they say submission, it's not that you're subject to the man. You're not a robot. Yes. So I know, I know the church has, slave. yes, you're not a slave. Only church has painted this, but that's not the idea. The idea is that we're not, we're not working as a team. Mm. So no matter the car you have, you know there's only one steering. Yes. With all the technology and development we have, they've not made cars with two steering. <laughs> so every time you enter the car, we're all submitting to whoever is driving. Is driving. So it's not because, um, you know, I, I'm older than you know. If he's the driver, we can't be dragging the steering with him. So a man is usually one that initiates a family. So God wants him to lead that family somewhere. So it's just order for hierarchy. Every group of people must have a head. All right? This doesn't mean PD is not, is not superior to anybody here. Mm. In fact, if he's the head, the Bible says, you know, you must use scripture to interpret scripture. Yeah. If you are the head, the Bible says, he that must be the chief among your head, among you. Let him what? Serve. So he's this, but PD is called the chief minister. The word minister is servant. So he's the chief servant of the house. So that's it. So you, need to, you, you must use scripture to interpret scripture. Unfortunately, we use culture and tradition. To interpret scripture to mean that if a woman is she's, she's, she's submit, submit doesn't mean you are a slave. It means you are agreeable, you are in alignment, you are working together as a team. Because without that, two people will always have two visions. All of us here, if I ask you your vision, all of us have different visions. But the only way for us to maintain the envoy nation as a church, we must all bring that vision together and work as a team. If we don't do that, then somebody can, it really wants them to sing um, Zoe. The, this required that you say, me, what I want to sing is a Zoe. <laughs> What's going to happen by the time they start playing those two songs? Yeah. Chaos. So the way we must, we must all align to what the set man wants us to play or what the music director feels we should play at the time. We align with it and we sing that same song. So imagine if they're leading Zoe and you in the crowd, you're singing your own song. <laughs> Do you understand? So when they're saying submission, it's not that you are a slave or you are an inferior being. Women are even smarter than men. Yeah. Women think better, think faster. I've said that in the morning. So they're not saying you're inferior. They're saying, look, walk in alignment with this leader. Then God has somebody he needs to speak to. Because when there's a group like this, if God wants to move all over, he has to speak to one person. He won't speak to everybody. It's not how it works. He will speak to one person. That person will speak on behalf of God. And we have one vision. The people are one. They speak one language. Then nothing will be restrained from them. Thank you, sir. Um, the next question. Is it okay to have a close male friend while in a serious relationship? My partner doesn't feel comfortable with that. Ah, you have answered the question. <laughs> If your partner is not comfortable with that answers the question. When you are in a relationship or in marriage, your commitment is to your partner. All right? If they are already not comfortable with it, you are in a covenant and a commitment to this person. The rest are friends. They can, they can give you space. Anybody that is not the friend of the family, and you expect you one that your partner is uncomfortable with, yeah. greet them goodbye. <laughs> and move forward, yes. Um, how long should you date before discussing and planning marriage? I've answered that earlier, Abby. Yeah. You see the problem? We see that question. That's what love will do. This can be, this can be five years old. They're saying, when can we discuss marriage? We should have discussed marriage before we started. That gives the lifespan of the dating. Because if somebody, somebody can date you seven years and say, thank you very much. I enjoyed this seven years. God bless you. The person that will marry you will enjoy. <laughs> and he has not lied to you because what he said at the beginning was he wants to date you. Yes. Um, how does a lady handle a situation in which she has Turn all prospects to brothers. <laughs> it looks like his brother zoning. Oh. She has friend zone or the brother. Let me read it again, yes. sir. How does a lady handle a situation in which she has turned all prospects to brothers? Okay. So every and so, so she doesn't like it what she has been doing. How <laughs> she changed. Uh, <laughs> it means everybody will become a brother at the end. Yeah, but she, she needs to be talked to. She needs to know why she's turning them to brother, if she's doing the right thing. Some people are just in that mode. Again, they might have a picture, a perfect picture they're looking for that doesn't exist. So you need somebody to I call it clarity sessions. We sit down and say, What do you really want a man? And I help you articulate it. That what you because people say, Oh, I can't marry somebody that's not a graduate. I try to help them find out is it a graduate you want or somebody intellectually compatible with you? Because there are some graduates you can't stand. Yes. So I help them articulate what are the things. Because you might, the person you're looking for might be around you. You're just using some, some, some parameters to counsel them. When my pastor got by, she had master's degree. I had OND. You know OND? O stands for ordinary. National. The national is Nigeria. 
when something is ordinary in Nigeria, you know it's bad. <laughs> you see, but there are some other master's degrees holder that she won't be able to stand because of where they are intellectually. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So you need to be articulate about what exactly you want so that you make sure you're not screening people off based on the wrong things. You know, so that's what she needs. And if she's sure she's doing the right thing, it's not a sin that you've not seen anybody you like. Wait, small. And you have not met all the brothers in the world now. So continue your search, the ultimate search. Thank you, sir. I, and I, if that's a trend, she probably needs to work yes, on I'm stopping saying, it. If it's a you trend sure. that everybody that comes, you say, oh, you're my brother, she has to mm. stop it. Okay. Um, this writing is interesting, but, but I'll try. Yes. It says, what would you say to a lady who has done 30 and going and no suitor is forthcoming and really she wants to be married um, some end up with Muslim but knowing not to be unequally yoked with some believer how long should they wait or something all right um, I'm already bothered by her saying um, she's considering Muslim or not going with Muslim you see, some people think they are waiting, but they are really not yet mm -hmm. waiting. Sure. They are not prepared at all. They are not even ready. Is somebody get what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a difference between a woman expecting a baby. She doesn't have a baby, but she's pregnant. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Yeah. It's different from somebody that's not even pregnant at all. They both look like they are waiting, but they are not really at the same stage of waiting. So some people like this are in anxiety constantly. When you're in anxiety constantly, you're not yet in faith. So even though time is going, you are not really yet... You've not started your real waiting. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. You're just in anxiety. You're praying the same prayer point every day of fear. All right? God doesn't work with fear. He works with faith. All right? He said when we pray, we must, must believe. So you need to work on your mind. Work on the fact that God is able to provide. Then receive a word from the Lord. Then wait genuinely in faith. Not that you are waiting the type of waiting you are still considering a Muslim. Then, I don't, then you, you're not yet in the right uh, spiritual place. You know, you, you, there are some options that shouldn't even be an option. Shouldn't be a discussion. Shouldn't even come into your question at all. All right? Be patient. Um, then, again, check if are you available, are you accessible, you know, are you in the right communities, are you where you can meet people, you know. Be active online also. I discovered that there are some people that are totally not active online. You are on Instagram, your page is on private, and you are single. <laughs> you know? Be, be out there, you know. I'm not saying you, you should, I'm not talking about dating sites. I'm not a fan of dating sites. It doesn't mean it's bad, but I'm just not a fan. But I'm talking about basic real online communities that are doing something else. Where you meet people like-minded. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Yeah, so like the woman by the well. That woman knew, the place people met those days was by the well. The well was the center of social meeting. You have to go to the well. It's like animal kingdom. Once things get tough in the animal kingdom and no food, lions and co go to the river. Because no matter how things are, all animals must come and drink water. So they will hunt there. So that's how the well is those days. The well is where action is. That's where they found Isaac's wife, by the well. That's where that woman that had seven husbands, or six husbands, she was always hanging out the well. And she met Jesus. In her mind, I'm sure she thought Jesus was husband number seven. She said, this fine man, how are you? She, and she knew how to have conversation. So be out there, interact with your mates, be in good godly pages that are of similar interest to the kind of people you know you would like. One of my daughters in America just got married a few months ago. How did she get married? She's a very good daughter of mine. She was a virgin and everything. Born again, good girl. But a music minister from Nigeria, one of the big ones, went visited her church in America, a white church. Visited her church. And she attended the meeting and videoed the, the, the singing and posted it on her Instagram story. Then the musician, the big artist, saw it and reposted it. When the big artist reposted it, one guy in her own, in the same state with her in America, saw that repost and said, oh, who is this girl that they posted her Instagram story and went to her page? Thank God her page was not on private. <laughs> went to her page and said, oh, this girl lives in my state and she's a good Christian. You see, that's like, you have meeting people of like mind. And she, she started chatting and they are married today. They, both, they were born in the same state in America all the way. They never met, never knew. They, they, they had a lot of mutual friends, but they never met, never knew. So you see, when you go to places of your kind of... So meetings like this, attend. Um, if you're an exercise buff, be going to the gym. Don't do exercise at home. When you're single, no. Go where people are. You need to meet you. When you're married, you can do at home. All right? <laughs> go where people are. Because God is not going to throw the husband from the moon. All right? Anywhere there's a well. Anywhere there's a well. Go there. 
I know how to carry conversation. Women are too serious. They say, how are you? Can I, where can I find the station? Just say, this way. And you just be going, no. <laughs> so, are you where are you taking your train to? Have conversation. Be friendly. Don't just be answering one one. You're making it difficult. Some men, they even want to ask you your number, but the way you're answering. They say, please, what's the time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you very much, sir. And the, the final question before... Yes. Um, you said when you pray for your partner, most times in the process, God changes you. Mm. Is it foolish to pray for someone to change? I agree God mostly will work on you when uh, and not the person in question. But bottom line, can people change? People do change. That's the whole essence and the reason why Jesus died in the first place. Because he believed that we can change. That's why I invested all that we do. Um, what I meant when I said that when you pray, God changes you first, is that most people come to the place of prayer thinking that, oh, I'm praying about my husband, so my husband is the problem. God will first open your eyes to see the problem. Most of the time, the problem is really you. It's how you are seeing things. So one of the things God will do is make you more patient, make you more, he will first work on you. After your own obedience is complete, then you can avenge disobedience. That's what the Bible says. So after God has worked on you, then if there's any changing, because sometimes when your perspective changes, you see that, oh, it's not really that this person was bad, it's just the way I was seeing it. If there's really anything left to be done, then God will work on that person. But, but I, I, that doesn't mean you shouldn't pray for your partner. Um, yesterday when I was explaining the difference between praying about and praying for, is that when you're praying about your partner, most times we're complaining. But when you're praying for, you're more or less prophesying over that person. And you're calling for the things that be not as though they were. So if this man is troublesome, you begin to declare that he's a peaceful man. You begin to declare that he makes sound decisions. He's not a fool. Anger does not rest in his bosom. You begin to declare those kind of things over him. And you will see that after a while, he will start to manifest that. But life and death is the power of the tongue. If every time you say you're a useless man, matter of time, it will be, he too will be a useless man. Because that's what you're calling him. So I'm not saying don't pray. I'm just saying pray correctly. That's all. Yeah, and interestingly, um, there's really nowhere in scripture where they said when people are having a marriage crisis, you should pray. Yeah. So now this is not saying you should not pray. I'm just going to say that God's first reaction to your marriage crisis is you do the right thing. So you see this in First Peter 3. He said if you marry somebody that doesn't obey the word, you by your own behavior... So continue being nice. Continue being right. Don't give him fire for fire. Because that's, that's our first reaction. If he's not, if he's a useless man, I will tell him. Give him a piece of my mind. No. God is saying, you know what? If he's not doing the word you, by your own behavior, do the word. If your wife is not doing the word you, by your own behavior, treat her with understanding. So that's, that's, that's the only scriptural instruction for crisis marriage. Not even prayer. But the one just adding prayer because we know that we should pray. Men should always pray and not to faint. But the first call is that make sure you are an incredible husband or incredible wife, and continue being so. Don't give them the reaction they're expecting. My, um, Smith Ugusa's wife had a great testimony along those lights, where her husband used to lock her out for going to church, but she would sleep outside in the cold. In the, they live in the UK here. Sleep outside in the cold, and when they open the door in the morning, she would enter, greet him, say, thank you, my husband, and prepare breakfast for him, and not even complain that he, she locked her out. And later, Smith Ugusa became born again and became one of the greatest preachers ever in the world. So, yeah. So, final questions from Chidi. Jide! <laughs> Is there a barber in the house? We are cutting the head today! <laughs> so that you can get married. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, my first question, I think most of my questions were based off of stuff you said. Um, the first one was, um, so, um, I know a lot of people have, like, what I call bandwidth in terms of relationships. You know, they, they can go in a couple and tend to just max out, like, most especially girls, like, I don't want to be with anybody anymore because I've been through a lot, you know. And then there's the question of, so you said something around um, timing earlier on today where, oh, if he's the one for you, you know, give it time, you know, if his true character will come out. But that goes against the idea of not being in a relationship for two years, three years. So it's kind of like looking at people, like you said, the Femis, the Yoruba demons, you know, where... They will literally tell you everything you want to hear. They will take care of you, do everything right, until it's, it's not right. You know? And it's like, how do, you, how do you deal with that initially? 
to avoid being there for a year, a year. I'm telling you, some would even promise you marriage. Like you said, you know, oh, is he, ask him, do you want marriage now? And he says, yes. He will give you everything, you know, and then you find out he's had a girl. I know literally someone who had a girl in France and a, a couple in Nigeria. The moment he broke up with her, she found out he had a wife. How she found out was because he had a wife, he had married her, but then she was pregnant two months after. Like, she was, no, she gave birth two months after. So the question is, like, where's the baby coming from? It means it's been there for time. You know, so how do you originally sieve out that guy and tell if he's the one, you know, bring out that character on time? You know, like you said, you don't want to be there for that long. You know, and you don't want to go into two, three, four, five relationships. So how are you going to solve that? And what, like, is there a method? Is there a process? You know, or do you just, like you said, wait? You know, do you want to do it? All right. Um, if, you, if you were around when I talked about the seven checkpoints, um, Time was just one of them. And in how you use the time matters. Like I said, start with basic friendship. Anybody that meets you and wants to rush you, let's start a relationship. No, that's already in itself is a bad sign. Because it means they are making a hasty decision. You can't commit somebody for life that you just met one, one week ago. So let's just talk. I want to know what you're about. You go to church. One day, I want to follow you and see your church. So what's their family? Do they have a church? If they don't have a church, they're just doing one human being. Of course, even in banks, if you want to give you a loan, you have to bring referees. I have to bring references. If they don't employ you some places, they're not going to take your word for it. So don't just jump into some, you meet somebody, you just, no, no, it's like the friends. Let me go and meet your family. Let me meet people. Let me, let me visit your church. Let me, who's your pastor? Then again, I talked about counseling. Hey, your pastor is there too. Hey, who is this pastor? There are times I have to call people. I'm like, you know this gentleman. They say, we've never seen him. Or sometimes they say, beware of him. <laughs> Do you understand? So there's a process and there's a prayer checkpoint. I mentioned that. So that's one of the most powerful ones. And sometimes everything is okay. But I just tell somebody, let's pray. So that if there's anything we need to see that we're not seeing. Sometimes some people's story, is too good to be true. So just say, hey, something must be off here. So there must be somebody that knows them. What's their lifestyle outside of you? Do they have a job? What's their career? So be careful of anybody that is dealing with you in isolation. He has nobody you know. Nothing is happening. So the signs are there usually. Just that if you're not trained, you might miss it. And again, that's why we talk about counseling checkpoints. A good counselor will guide you and ask specific questions. Who are his parents? Who are his family? Have you visited his family? Some stuff like that. And forget anybody telling you that, oh, in our culture, it's just only me, you marry. No, we don't do like that. I want to visit your family. I want to visit your church. I want to visit your pastor. Let's know other people that can vouch for you. Because marriage is such a serious thing. Don't jump on it with somebody you just met. And the final one, um, I think you said something about, like, people who get into relationships and then you find out they've dated someone. It might be best friends. I've seen um, brother you know, and it wasn't intentional, no one knew, you know, you could switch countries, and you just meet a guy somewhere, yeah. so great, probably even five months down the line, he's bamboozled your head, you know, and then you find out his brother was the one you were with, and you know the way it is now, sexual, like they've had mm -hmm. mad sexual experiences, mm -hmm. you literally see the guy, you're like, yes, that time, it was great, mm -hmm. you know, it's ha like, you can't entirely say it's impossible to date that person. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how do you, because it's psychological, so how do you go cr across that point to get them to work? Um, again, you see, marriage is not do or die. For me, I think, yes. <laughs> I, I think she doesn't have to marry any of those guys. It's going to be dramatic, that's the truth. And you know, at the beginning, when you are so full of these emotions, you think we can cope. Ten months down the line, you know, when children come, when things happen, when you guys are having a family reunion and the two guys are in the same house, um, then your own husband has to leave. You are now in the same house with your ex that you've had wild sexual experiences with. And he has muscles. And he has taken off his shirt. He's squeezing water and the water is... For me, I just think it's too dramatic. Marriage should not carry such tension with it everywhere. You know, and all that. So for me, I'm not a fan. But if people think they can do it, well, you know, they can try. But for me, I just like peace. I like things to be the right way. Simple, you know. I don't like complications. So that's what, that's what I think. Yes. All right, sir. Before we go, sir, please, can you possibly?